Hey everyone, welcome welcome back to the channel. I have another tutorial here for you today and it's for one of my favorite things I've ever made. It is of course for these adorable little crochet bees. Here's red, orange, and green. And then I also have them in blue and yellow here. They're very short, as you can see, only one stripe with the two little wings, but they're so popular for markets and they work up so fast. So they're great as like a little gift or anything like that. So let's just get straight into the video and I'll show you how to make them. And I hope you love them as much as I do. Okay, to get started with our materials, I have Bernat blanket yarn, which I always use. I have it in three colors. I have yellow, I have white, and I have black, but of course you can use whatever colors you prefer. I have a crochet hook. Mine is size six because that's what matches my yarn. I have a needle for some sewing, stitch marker, scissors, I have some stuffing off to the side and I have my safety eyes just for some finishing touches. Starting with whatever color you want the main part of your body to be, you have two options. You can either do a magic circle or you can do the chain two method. Since this yarn for me doesn't slide nicely to close the magic circle, I'm going to use the chain two method, which we start with a slip stitch like so, put our hook in, and then like the name suggests, you chain two. So one, two. And then we're going to do eight single crochet into this second chain here. So the first one that we made. And then this should make a nice circle once you get all eight single crochet in there. Two. It will get a little tight in there as you continue to add more and more. Finally, we have eight in a nice circle here. Now we're gonna move on to round two, which is simply going to be eight increases. So two in every stitch all the way around to bring us up to a total of 16. So that was one single crochet and then into the same stitch, we're going to do another one. So that is one increase and we're gonna do that seven more times. And 16. Now we are ready to move on to round three, which is going to start with a single crochet into the first stitch. And then into the next stitch, we're going to do an increase. So two in the same stitch. So one and two, and we're going to repeat this pattern all the way around. So a single crochet followed by an increase, and this should bring us up to a total of 24 stitches for the round. and 24 stitches for the end of round three. Now moving on to round four, we are simply going to do 24 single crochet around. So one single crochet in each stitch. And 24 for the end of round four. Now you can grab whatever color you wanted for the stripe and we're gonna switch over to that. And to do so, you are simply going to, almost like you're about to single crochet into the next stitch, you're gonna put your hook through, grab the yarn, so yarn over, and pull a loop through so you have two on your hook. Now you can go ahead and take this yarn. You wanna leave a bit of a tail so we can tie it later. You're going to just loop it over your hook and pull it through both. Simple as that. And then we're going to just single crochet around, so 24 single crochet. For the first one, I like to go over this thread just so it, in my mind, it makes it a little bit more secure. And this will be our first stitch of the round. So now we can go around all the way back to the start of this black color. And 24 should stop you right in the stitch before this. Now that was round five, 24 single crochet. Now we're on to round six and we're simply going to do 24 single crochet again with our black yarn. So this is one. And 24 for the end of round six will get you to here. And as you can see, this is where we started. We're going to do one more single crochet. Now we're going on to round seven and we're going to switch back to yellow. So what you're gonna do is go into the next stitch. I know you can't really see with the black yarn, but into the next stitch, yarn over on your hook and pull a loop through. So you have two loops on your hook. Then we're going to go back with our yellow color and pull it through. 
And now we're going to continue on and we are going to just do two rounds of 24 single crochet. You can just leave this yarn attached and I'll show you how to deal with it in a moment. So two rounds of 24 single crochet with your main color again. and 24 for the end of round, I believe we're on eight. So I'm just gonna pull up a big loop here just so nothing comes undone. And I like to flip my bee inside out. As you can see, a little messy on the inside, but oh well, it's the inside of the bee. Then we can just detach this main piece of yarn. You wanna leave a little bit of a tail here. And as you can see, we now have our two tails in black from where we started and where we ended. And I simply like to just double knot them together so I know they're nice and secure. There we go. Now we have our body shape that looks like this. And now we are going to go ahead and make the wings so we can sew them on while the body is still open. Now, the way I make my wings is a little different because I'm lazy and I hate sewing. So I make them in one piece. So a way you will see quite often is you'll do a magic circle with six single crochet and then a round of increases for 12. And you'll then detach, you'll cut that off and you'll make another one so you have two and then you'll sew them on so you have two separate wings. Mine are in one big piece. So I'm gonna show you how to do that but if you ever find it too complicated, feel free to go back and do the other method with the two pieces. So what I do is again, we're gonna do a magic circle with six single crochet in it. And then we can go ahead and pull that shut. Now for the next round of this, we are simply going to do six increases. So we're going to do an increase in every stitch around to bring us up to a total of 12. So that was one in that stitch two in the same stitch and repeat that around. Twelve. So as you can see, this is like one half of the wing done. Now, this is where my method is a little different. We are now going to do a chain of three. One, two, and three. Now in the second chain from your hook, so this middle one here, we're going to place six single crochets, kind of like the chain two method we did to start the B. We're simply going to do one, two, and then three. And then we're going to flip our piece around. So we're gonna spin it so that we're then single crocheting onto the other half of the chain. So if you'll see now number four is going to come out on the opposite side to make it a circular shape. So that was four, five, and six. So now we have basically two magic circles with six. It, they're just attached to each other instead of as two separate pieces. Now, just like the other side, we're going to do six increases around, but only on this one circle here. And this will bring us up to a total of 12 so that both sides match and the wings are even. So that was one, two in the same stitch and repeat that around. And 12. Now this is probably the most difficult part of this whole wing is I like to attach mine together like so as opposed to having them as two separate pieces. Again personal preference but I find since the one is a little more raised than the other because of the chain it kind of evens them out and makes them flush. It might be a little tricky to see with my yarn because I'm using a fluffier yarn but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just have them as they are laying flat and we're going to just push them together and then to attach them, I like to simply do wherever this lines up with. So it's gonna be about this stitch here. When we line them up, I'm going to just do a slip stitch. So I'm gonna pull it straight through into this one, just like so. Now, when you line them up, you should see that this stitch and this stitch align. So we can just slip stitch across the top to attach our two pieces together. So there should be right through the middle of each pull a loop through and pull it straight through here. As you can see, the pieces are now kind of attached. And for this final one, we're gonna go into the next stitch on this wing. And you'll see this is where our chain we did to attach the pieces is. That's what this thing is here. So I like to go to the back side of it and put it in that stitch so that the chain gap is covered. And again, we're going to do a slip stitch. Now, if you look at it, 
we can pull this, your piece should be completely flush with each other and it kind of just looks like a figure eight type shape. Now, when we're going to detach our yarn and you're gonna to wanna to leave quite a long tail to sew on. So I have my bee body here and my wing. So what I like to start with is this magic circle tail here because it's short, so we're only gonna put it through once. So I'm just gonna thread it onto my needle and then we're going to just place this. As you can see, there is our color change here, which we're gonna to wanna to cover up with these wings. The method I figured out best, where you see this color change here, we're going to go up and over one. So I'm gonna place it right here. And then I'm gonna just simply pull my needle through and leave that piece of thread here. And you're gonna want this long tail that you have on the front of your bee. So as you can see, this is now roughly over top of where the color change is. Then we can go ahead and thread our long end of the needle. And I am going to show you how exactly I sew it that I get the color change covered up. If you peek under here, you can see this is the furthest most peak of the black yarn. So we're going to go directly into that with our white. And then we can just go ahead and pull that through. So now, as you see, can see, when we pull it tight, it's basically almost all covered. Now, to secure this middle part here, I like to go up on the side of the color change, right next to it, up here, and then in through the wing, just next to that same spot, next to the color change, like so. Again, if you have your own sewing methods, totally feel free to use those. This is just how I like to do mine and I feel it makes them pretty secure. Then I'm gonna jump across this gap here and go into this little stitch here. You can see this is where we did our slip stitches and then it should just kind of be lined up with where on the body it should be sitting. So you can just push straight in and you'll see now it's gonna pull it nice and tight and kind of remove that bump we have. Then I'm gonna go back up on the same side we just came through, but a little higher up. So like about here and then through the next stitch on the wing, the next one up. And we're going to basically repeat the process. We're gonna go across over the little gap bridge and into wherever on the body, we're now in the middle of the wing. Then I like to do this one final time at the top of the wing up here. Just like so. Now, this is where I get a little fancy to make sure my wings are super secure on. I like to place one stitch at the back here where you can see this color change is also present. And I'm going to put it in through this final stitch of the round on the wing here and go into the next one on the other side into that other peak of the color change to make sure that's all covered up. Then all I like to do to make sure it's secure is I go in somewhere over here up through the side of the wing, like about here. So I'll pull up and then I'll go down on this bottom part here. And this will just kind of hold the wing down when we pull it nice and tight so that it won't flip off. Then since you can still see this color change a bit, I go back to the middle up through that same part we were in earlier, like there. And I'm going to go up one more time. I'm just gonna go straight down into the wing over here on the side to the left pull that through and then I like to go up one more time same stitch down at the bottom here and I like to go to the right hand side and this will just make it so that I feel super secure in it and that you can't really see that color change at all and then to finish it off I go over to the other side and repeat what we did for the other one to hold it down so I'm gonna go up about here on this wing, and then I'm going to go down at the back part. And I'm feeling confident in that. Of course, I have a little bit of thread left, so if there's any parts that feel loose or I wanna stretch them out so they look a little more even, I can go ahead and do that. But since I'm happy with how mine turned out, I'm simply going to take my two white threads and I'm going to simply double knot them together just so that everything stays nice and secure. Also make sure you're not tying these double knots too tight because if you stretch these two end threads, they can cinch the body of the bee together. 
Now that I've finished knotting those together, this is when I like to add the eyes because obviously it's still open so I can place them inside and I can see where exactly the wings are so I can center them exactly how I like. I have now placed my eyes. I did them between the second and third round and just did them on opposite sides with the point of the wing in the center. But of course you can place them wherever you'd like and it's your creation so it's completely up to you. Now you can go ahead and reattach your hook and we're actually almost done because this is just a short and chunky little bee. So to start this next round, which I believe is round nine, we are going to just do a single crochet. And in the next stitch, we are going to do a decrease. And we are going to repeat this pattern of a single crochet followed by a decrease all the way around. And it will bring us down to a total of 16 stitches for round nine. Sixteen for the end of round nine. Now this is where I like to go ahead and stuff my bee just while I can still reach inside and there's still room so I'm going to do that now. Now we are on to our final round of the bee which is going to be round 10 and it is simply going to be eight decreases around. So that was one decrease right there and we're going to do seven more. Eight. So we have eight stitches left and we're going to go ahead and cut off our yarn. You're going to want to leave a fairly long tail because we will be now sewing it shut. So all you're going to do is take this tail thread and you're going to thread your needle and you're going to go around and go into the front loops of each of these final decreases. We're simply going to only go into this top one. So that's one, two, Then you can simply go ahead and pull on this. And then since there might be some slight gaps around, I just like to go up and down a couple of times around the center, just to make sure that everything is nice and secure and cover up any bumps if there are any. Then once you feel confident, you can just double knot this thread and push it back into the body. And that is your adorable little bee all done. I was sitting there wondering why it looked so blank and I realized I forgot to sew the face on. So this is the actual finished product. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe. All my socials will be in the description below. So feel free to tag me in any of your creations. I love seeing them. It's actually my favorite thing. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.